we're talking about conscience and the definitive knowledge between the difference between right and wrong. We really covered this extensively on the section uh, where we covered natural law as what needs to be the ultimate foundation for enacting any solution in the world. You know, until we understand that knowledge, we really shouldn't be doing many actions at all. We should really be res reserving our action until we really understand that. That's why natural law really needs to be taught to young people, you know, from as early as they can start comprehending language. So that when they do start taking actions regarding other people in the world, uh, in relationship to other people in the world, their actions will be in harmony with natural law. And that's the problem. We're not teaching natural law to anyone because we don't know it ourselves as a society. It hasn't been taught to us, and therefore the, the uh, propagation of ignorance goes down generation to generation. So uh, there's many slides. There's four three slides here from the natural law section as a brief review. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but the word right is synonymous with correct because they are based in truth. Right means both moral and correct because it's based in truth and natural law. If something is correct, it's based in truth. If something is moral, it's based in natural law and it's based in truth and it's correct. It's right. Actions that are based in right do not result in harm to other sentient beings. Wrong, contrasted with right, is incorrect. It is immoral. That's why we use it for both meaning both incorrect, you're, you're wrong about that, you're, you gave the wrong answer, and immoral. We follow what is not true, it leads us to immoral behavior. Incorrect, not based in truth. Immoral, not based in natural law. That's what wrong is. And the reason that it's wrong is because actions that are based in it result in harm to other sentient beings. And that's common sense. You know when suffering is being caused to another person. And if there's no soft suffering being caused to another living being that has provable cause, provable result of harm that has been done to them, then there's no wrong action that has been done and someone has a right to take that action. You know, someone brought up the other day that, okay, the, uh, the uh, Islamic law that prevents women from showing their face, could that be in harmony with natural law? Absolutely not. It's an, it's an impossibility for that to be in harmony with natural law. Is it a right or not for a woman to show her face to someone else in public? Of course it is a right. Why is that a universal right? It doesn't matter what a religion says about it. It doesn't matter what a government says about it. It doesn't matter what any individual says about it. At all times, all places in the universe, you are allowed to bear your face in public. Why is it a right? Because you're not harming someone else as a result of that behavior. So let's look at smoking marijuana for an example. Is that a right or is it not a right? It is universally, 100%, unequivocally, at all times and places in the entire universe, a right. Why? Well, one, because you're doing it to you. Shoving a joint in someone else's mouth, lighting it, and forcing them, you know, holding your, your fingers over their nose and your hand over their mouth until they're forced to take a breath is not a right because you're doing it to someone else that may not want that. So you're coercing their will, their free will. Whenever there's coercion of free will involved, it's not a right. Because harm is being done. The person is saying no, and you're refusing to accept their refusal. Which, this is what the show next week is going to be about entirely. The whole show on apophysis and the power of the word no. And I'm going to go into some allegories again through popular fiction, of the usage of the word no. I'm going to look at three particular modern movies that th the most powerful word in the universe is explained in allegorical fashion. The word no, which we need to start falling in love with. And understand apophysis, which I'm going to touch on at the end here today. But 
This is the difference between right and wrong. You're allowed to smoke marijuana under natural law because you're doing it to you. You are taking something into your body. That's your property. You own this vehicle while your consciousness inhabits it in this realm. Someone else doesn't own your body. Therefore, they're not allowed to tell you what you're allowed to do with your body via putting something into it. It doesn't matter what justifications or reasons they come up with. Now, that means you're responsible for what you do with your body after you ingest something. You're not absolved of personal responsibility. If you want to take some substance and then do something that is then subsequently subsequently do something that is immoral, you need to be held accountable for the action. It doesn't matter that, that you took something. You made the decision to take something that affected your judgment. And then you did the action, so you're accountable for it under natural law. So understand what natural law is. This is slide number 15. A living being must be harmed or defrauded in order for a violation of natural law rights to have taken place. And rights that do not exist for an individual can never be granted by man's law to any other individual or any group of individuals. You can't make up a right that other people don't have and saying, well, now this group of people has that right. And this is what we think we can do with government and police and militaries, etc. And all kinds of bureaucratic institutions, rights that other people do not have. And they'll claim this nonsensical, so, non-existent social contract bunk as a result, uh, you know, to justify their immoral behaviors. And there is no such thing. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a social contract. There's individuals either choosing to live in harmony with natural law with each other or refusing to live in harmony with natural law. And they're therefore creating chaos instead of order. So we need to know what right is versus what wrong action is. And the best way to know what right is is through the negative. And I keep emphasizing this over and over again. Stop accepting this new age bunk of never look at the negative or don't try to define things in the negative sense. That's the best way to define what a right is, is to take a look, a good, hardcore look and an honest appraisal of what is wrong. What is a wrong is what you need to truly understand to understand what a right is. Because a right is anything which remains if there is no wrongdoing, which is a harm to another person through your action. So if I sit here and drink a beer, that would have been illegal in 1920, even though I was harming no one. And now suddenly, magically today, that's legal. They can make something from immoral to moral or from moral to immoral at the stroke of a pen. Yeah, you didn't know how that's how, how it works. Morality and immorality have nothing to do with nature's laws. It has to do with the whims of a dictator who writes something down in a little book and now says, well, that's now immoral. Anybody that I catch doing it, is, it can be punished by whatever dictates I happen to uh, also pen down that they will be punished according to. It was moral to drink a beer in, in 1920 after prohibition was passed, just like it is moral to do it now. Why? Because I'm putting it into my body. Do I have a right to hold someone down who says that they don't want to drink any alcohol and pour a beer down their throat? No, I do not and never will. Because that's someone else's vehicle for expression, not mine. It's all about ownership and the understanding of self-ownership. And look, we've covered this extensively in the section on natural law, which I encourage everybody to go back in the podcast and listen to it again. Even if you heard it once, for those who haven't heard it, you need to go and listen to that material. This is just a quick review. I believe it was in the 70s up through the 80s is where I covered, uh, not where the, the 60s up through the, into the 70s, something like that in the podcast section. Natural law holds true regardless of population. You know, people think, oh, that works when there's only a few people in the world, but, oh, when we have a big population, no, we can't respect these rights or these rights. We have to curtail those rights. Natural law holds true regardless of how many people are. And when in doubt whether an act is in harmony with natural law, visualize a scenario with only two people. And if it's right, then it's right, it's wrong. Please. 
it's wrong to call them seven billion. We're going to talk about the apophatic inquiry, the apophatic nature of truth next week when it comes to saying no to this control system. That's all we have time for. Stick around. Chris Everard. We all know that Berkey water purification.